Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, we're going live here from the Panhandle of Florida. And the temperature is dropping. It says it's 62 degrees clear outside. And last week it was 88 degrees. So that's a big difference, but that's good. It was a cool day today. Now, if you're new to the channel, welcome to the channel. This is your YouTube channel to help you get your K-1 visa. And I'm not an immigration attorney. I don't work for USIS. I don't give you any legal advice. But I've been through this K-1 visa process twice successfully so far. Well, almost on my second successful uh, K-1 visa uh, process. Karina, my beautiful Prometida, lives in Bogota, Colombia. Uh, but she is originally from Caracas, Venezuela. But she didn't like living in Venezuela because they had no electricity, they didn't have any, the water wasn't intermittent, the food, the shelves on the food were disappearing, you know, the food on the shelves were disappearing in the, in the supermarkets, and the, the Venezuelan Bolivar des, was decimated by the communist government, so she moved to Colombia. And luckily for me, that she did. You know, I'm glad she moved there because there's no way I'm going to Venezuela, not yet. When, when, when Venezuela is a free country, then I will go visit her family. That's left. Most of Karina's family lives in Colombia and Brazil. Jacob Myers, good evening, Diego, Jacob. Now, Jacob has his K-1 visa appointment already set for his beneficiary in the Philippines. How about that? Mr. Nahas, good evening. Mr. Nahas, my friend from Iraq, I salute you. We hope you're doing well. We hope your family is doing good. Jacob, I'm kind of nervously excited. My fiance is at the medical center right now. So so your, so your fiance is at St. Luke's Extension in, in Manila. Getting the medical exam. Great. That's good. Glad to hear it. And, and he'll get it. He'll be fine. Kamani, Kamani Young, Diego, you are awesome. You guys are awesome, okay? See, I've been through this K-1 visa process twice, so I know what the headaches are. I know what it's like. So, Karina, we were in we were in Colombia, Central Colombia, Karina said, put a YouTube channel together and help other people. So we did, and now we're helping you. <laughs> Susie Goldemez, hello, Diego. What's going on, Susie? Diana Figueroa, hello, Diego. If I quit my job, October 1st, and our interview is October 17th. Am I going to need a sponsor? Now, Diana, Diana I get, remind me, are you the beneficiary or are you the sponsor? Are you the sponsor? Are you the sponsor, Diana? Remind me. Please remind me. Nikita Ajane. Hi, Diego. My medical is on the 12th of October. I'm nervous. What are you nervous about? It's not hard. Diana, yes. You are the sponsor. Okay, if you are the sponsor, okay, and you quit your job on the first, and your interview, and the interview is the seventeenth. Will you need a sponsor? Well, it depends. What's your income going to change to? If your income changes, if you quit your job, obviously you're not going to be making money, right? You're going to need a joint sponsor. Probably not for the visa interview, but for the green card, when you apply for your, when your beneficiary applies for the green card, that's when you're going to need the sponsor, the joint sponsor, because immigration is going to want to know what, what's your income for 2024. They're going to ask you, what's your income for 2024? So get a joint sponsor to cover yourself, unless you get another job, which makes more money than the second, the job you're going to quit. Or don't quit the job until you apply for the green card. Wait until you apply for the green card and then go ahead and quit your job and then look for another job. At least get the green card going. You know, I'm just trying to help you here. Okay, Diana says, that's fine. I'm getting a new job in November. Okay. Well, as long as it makes more money than, than what you need for immigration, you're good. Uh, let's see. Tina. Hello, Diego. What's going on, Tina? Janiella James. Hi, Diego. Hope all is well with you. Everything's great. And uh, Karina messaged me. She said she's going to go. She, see, Karina, 
Karina ran a 10K yesterday. Tank In Bogota, Colombia, there was a 10K race. So for you guys watching from Colombia, Bogota, there was a 10K race. So if the traffic was backed up, if all the roads were closed around uh, northern Bogota, that's the reason. And Karina ran in that race. And now, and now her legs are killing her. She's hurting. So she's, she's <laughs> I don't know. I mean, she's, uh, she did good, though. She completed the race. Uh, Diana, I just worried about the K-1 visa interview. Well, I would not quit your job until after the K-1 visa interview. Don't quit. Quit it after the visa interview so that there's no problems, okay? The K-1 visa interview is so important. It's very important. What if your beneficiary gets asked, uh, does, does your sponsor have a job? What's, what's your sponsor's job? That could happen. So wait until after the visa interview before you change anything, okay? And if you're going to start work in November, then you're good. Then that information will be included on your adjustment of status paperwork. Remember, you got to get a letter from your new boss telling immigration how much money you make. Starting when you get your new job in November, you got to put that letter together for your adjustment of status paperwork. You know, just protect yourself. Protect your beneficiary. Uh, Nikita Ajani, hey, have you been able to book the medical and interview for Karina? No. I, I sent an email to the embassy in Bogota, and I said, hey, guys, we got our ready status. Checking in. I'm checking in. What do we do? Well, I know what to do, but I wanted immigration in Bogota to, to get that email. And two days, within two days, they emailed me back. And they said, you got to wait a week or so, maybe two weeks, and then we will send you directions on what to do. And that was four days ago. So I still got another three days to another 10 days probably to wait for the embassy in Bogota to contact me and tell me what to do. But I know what to do. But I'm just, I'm not going to start trying to do anything until they're ready, until they are really ready for me. Uh, so, no, I haven't, Nikita, not yet. Jason Mabry, the police station in Ghana, told my fiance the police report is only good for six months. It's good for two years in a K-1 process. Yes. Now, let me explain to you. The, the police station in Ghana does not control the U.S. State Department. Okay? The United States of America, via the U.S. State Department, put out a, a, a notice that says, Police certificates are good for two years from the issue date. So the U.S. government doesn't care what the Ghana government says. Okay, they don't care. All you got to worry about is what the U.S. government will, uh, will accept. And the U.S. government at embassies around the world will accept uh, police certificates, and they will, they will calculate two years from the issue date. So relax. Diana, I already quit, Diego. Is it better to get a, job, a joint sponsor? Well, if you quit your job and you have no income, uh, yes, you need a joint sponsor. You should have waited until after the visa interview. You need a joint sponsor. Now you got to go find a joint sponsor, and the joint sponsor has to fill out the I-134, get the, get the 1040, get the W-2s, get the bank statements, letter of the employer, and all that. Get all that together so that you can give it to your beneficiary. So if immigration find out you quit your job, you're not going to lose your visa because you're not working. Well, you won't lose your visa. What they'll do is they'll say, you need a joint sponsor. Well, give me a, get, get a joint sponsor. We'll put your visa on, in a 221G administrative hold. Just get a joint sponsor. Get it to your beneficiary so you don't go into administrative hold. Cover yourself. Uh, Jacob, Diego is just checking, even though I'm not allowed in the interview room. Well, don't go in there. I can't, I can stick around the embassy for him to finish, right? Yeah, you can hang out at the embassy, but I wouldn't walk around with your cell phone in your hand. You might, you'll probably get yelled at. Sit down on a bench, okay, and read a paper, read a book, eat some M&Ms, buy a big bag of M&Ms. I don't know if you can buy M&Ms in the Philippines, but buy a big box of something, eat, eat some candy, and just sit down and wait. It won't take long. 
Uh, Tashlin Swirl, good night, Diego. What's going on, Tashlin? And Rose at says, good evening all. Well, good evening, Rose. Jason, they also had her write USA on the back of her passport photo. I thought that was kind of strange because the police report is all about her. That's the first I've ever heard that anybody has ever had to make you write USA on the back of the of the passport photo. Well, may, maybe the folks in Ghana uh, in the embassy are just doing things different. Every embassy's got their own little way of doing things, okay? Some embassies want you to bring the divorce decree, some which, which is mandatory, by the way, for every embassy. But some embassies want the marriage certificate and the divorce decree so they can match them up. Who knows? Just cover every base. Uh, Gurvinda Saab. Hello, Nikita. Did you get your instruction letter? So Gurvinda's. Gurvinda's got a question for Nikita. Edna Simon. Hi, Diego. Should the supporting documents for Form I-134 be original or can I be scanned copies? Scan copies are fine. The, the, you got to have the original I-134 signed with a black ink pen, dated. Got to have the original, okay, of that 13-page form. But the tax returns, the W-2s, the 1099s, the pay stubs, all that other jazz, the the the, pay, the, the, the bank statement, the employer letter, they can all be scanned copies. But but you got to have an original I-134. Remember, the instructions in the USCIS webpage says regarding the I-134, a copy will be considered. Well, considered means maybe it won't be accepted. You don't want to be in that position where you got everything perfect and you send a scanned copy of the I-134 and they reject it. Don't get in, don't fall into that boat, okay? Don't get in that trap. Make sure you have your I-134 original signed, okay? Original. And all the other financial documents you can copy, scan, and email to your beneficiary. Uh, Mariama Karoma, Diego, I am divorced and the petitioner. Okay, should I send a divorce decree to my beneficiary? Oh, yes. Mariama, I am so glad that you decided to pop on this live stream. Because if you don't give your beneficiary your certified copy of your divorce decree every page, if you don't, you're gonna have your beneficiary is gonna be, be put into a 221G administrative hold. And then they're gonna ask for the divorce decree, the certified copy. Go to your go to your courthouse, wherever it is. Don't accept it via email. Go in person. Pay for the divorce decree. What is it? 10 bucks, 12 bucks, 20 bucks, whatever. Have the clerk stamp it and sign it. Have how many pages it is, and send it to your beneficiary. Very important. Very important. If if you're divorced, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, you must provide a certified copy of your divorce decree. Now it's got to be the final copy, not the magistrate. Sometimes a magistrate will sign off and email you the divorce decree. That's all well and good, but that's not completed. The completed divorce decree is when it's signed by a judge. So you get the you get the you get the magistrate sign her part or his part. You get the email. You're divorced. Here's the magistrate's report. But it's only a recommendation. That has to go to the judge. The judge will get it a few days later, a week later, whatever, and sign it. And then you go to the then you're going to get another email saying, "Here's the judge's final decision." You're divorced. He signed off, or she signed off on the on the on the paperwork. Then you go to the courthouse and you get a, a certified copy of it. Okay, stamped by the clerk. Get two copies of it. Well, buy one and make a copy of the second one. Okay, but you got to make a color copy. All right, got it? Very important. Savvy me, Diego, U.S. Embassy in Colombia wants us to do fingerprints at the Applicant Service Center, CAS, with medical appointments too. Did they make your prior fiance do the fingerprints? Yeah, it's normal. It's easy. You just got to spend more money, but that's true. You have to do that. You got to do the, the fingerprints at the Applicant Service Center. That's correct. Uh, and with medical appointments too. Yeah, it's 
that's Colombia. But it's it's a, it's actually the U.S. embassy. It's not Colombia. It's the embassy controls that. Keeping up with Irene. Whoa, let's keep up with Irene. Hello, Diego. All my documents carries my birth name, birth name for five years. Uh, okay, let me read that again. Hello, Diego. All my documents carry my birth name. But five years ago, I changed it to my kid's father's name. We were never married. I already put in for K-1. Will this affect me? Yeah, it will affect you if you didn't include a document that shows that you changed your name. When you filed your K-1 visa, did you put in your K-1 visa package the paperwork that shows where you changed your name? It's not going to affect your visa at all unless you didn't tell immigration what you did. So if you changed your name, you got a paperwork, right? Whoever did it, the courthouse, wherever it got done, you have paperwork. If you didn't include that paperwork in your K-1 visa package, you're going to probably get an RFE. Immigration's going to ask for it, okay? They're going to ask for it. But if you included it, this is, this dear immigration, I changed my name, here's the paperwork. Include it in your K-1 visa. Put it on your cover sheet. If you included it, you're good. If you didn't, it's not going to stop you from getting the visa, but you're going to be asked for the paperwork. Uh, Jason Mabry, I asked before, but I'm nervous about a felony arrest, no conviction. If USCIS rejects due to that, is there anything to keep the case open and prove with further paperwork? Well, they haven't, they haven't denied it yet. And you did publicly on your K-1 visa package, on your I-129F, when you filed your K-1 visa, you included in there the paperwork, right? You included the paperwork. You put it down. This is what happened. It was dismissed, right? As long as you are open and transparent with immigration, okay? You, I'm not an immigration attorney, but I would say you're good as long as you told them, okay? Yeah, you can keep the case open, but you need to get an immigration attorney if they deny it. That's when you get the immigration attorney. Right now, you don't. Mariama Karoma, thank you, Diego. No worries. Edna Simon, hi. okay, thank you very much. My fiance has already sent me the original I-134 through the mail. Very good, that's good. I just wanted to make sure whether the supporting documents, uh, yeah, you're good. Pete B, look, still waiting for visa to be mailed Monday. It was a holiday. Today is Columbus Day. Happy Columbus Day. High five, Pete B, thank you for that super chat. Congratulations on your K-1 visa from the Philippines, Pete. I knew you was gonna get it. You, you did. You got it. You got it. Uh, and and then Edna. Let me finish up with Edna. I wanted to make sure whether the supporting documents can be scanned and sent to be by yeah by email. Sure, that's fine. That's no problem. But the I one thirty four. You need the original. James Juan. Hi Diego from India. What are the documents for biometrics? Well, that would be your fingers. Your fingers. You're gonna go. You're gonna. You're gonna schedule the visa interview at the embassy in Mumbai, at the consulate, excuse me, in Mumbai. And then once you've scheduled the visa interview, you're gonna get told to go do biometrics. And then you just basically go to an office or a location in Mumbai or wherever it is, and give your fingerprints or your beneficiary. They'll tell you how to do it. It's not hard. You don't have to fill out any paperwork. You just show up. And do your and do it. So you pay, you know, gotta pay. Nothing's free. Uh, savvy me. Should I go with my fiance during the interview? I don't speak Spanish, but understand most mostly my girl don't speak English. We use a translation and we make it work. Sure, go to the visa interview in Bogota with your beneficiary and stand with her and be with her and explain that you guys talk to each other and communicate through a translator. It's all good. And then if immigration asks her the question, how do you communicate? She will respond in Spanish that I am learning English. I'm learning English. She will tell the immigration officer in Spanish, you know, just studio English. I'm studying English. Okay, don't forget, she needs to say that. And you're good, all right? Spend B1231, military exemption date ends on... 
31 12 2023 what do you what is a military exemption date what are you talking about if i get interviewed before that day would they be like this exemption gonna at the end of this year you need to renew it no that you if you're talking about the uh what are you talking about what's the military exemption date what what is that i've never heard of it savvy me we communicate through skype and what's and what's up and google translation okay but we understand each other easily. Well, yeah, if you use a translator, is that going to be an issue if I accompany her? No. If you accompany her, that shows your support for your beneficiary. Go to the visa interview. Just because you don't speak Spanish is no big deal. Just because she doesn't speak English is no big deal. But she needs to tell the immigration officer, if the immigration officer says, how do you communicate? She will say, we use translators. And because my English isn't very good, but I'm learning English. And then leave it right there. Leave it right then. Say nothing else. Boom. Check. Next question. Okay. You got it? Uh, keeping up with Irene. Thanks a lot, Diego. I appreciate. I was thinking and praying to meet your live stream. We're here for you keeping up with Irene. Irene, you got to keep up with us now. We're here for you. Karina's watching right now. She's watching. She's sitting down watching from Bogota, Colombia. Spin 1231. Any Turkish people here trying to get a K1 would love to exchange information. Okay, guys, if you are from Turkey, connect with Spin B1231. Jacob Myers, I'm so ready to travel to the Philippines. 11 days to go. Don't be counting days, Jacob. You're going to get sick. Don't count days. You know the rule, right? In K-1 visa processing. Do not count the days. Beto Trejo. Hi, Diego. Waiting for my welcome letter from Bogota. My case was ready September 26th. How long do we need to wait? Well, I'm in the ready status too. And they told me a couple of weeks. So September 26th. Add 14 to September 26th. What's that? What's that? It's about October 10th? That's probably this week. You should hear this week from the embassy in Bogota. Uh, Edna Simon, thank you. No worries. Spend B1231 in Turkey. In Turkey, for some reason, they want me to bring military... What? Military car exemption document. What is that? I don't know what that is. I'm re I was in the Navy. I was in the U.S. military for 20 years. I've never had to produce any military exemption documents or whatever it is. Are you Spend B, are you this beneficiary or are you the sponsor? Spend B, one, two, three, one. Are you the beneficiary or the sponsor? Pete B, Jacob Myers, that's great. When is your interview? I oh, don't ask him that. He's going to start counting days on his calculator. Uh, and then Pete B and Jacob are talking. Jacob Myers, Diego, the counting days is the work days. Get to count them down. It's like when you're getting to go on a vacation from work. I've had three days off since last November. So you're going to Wally World, right? But what if it's close? You go, you go, you drive from Chicago to Wally World and you get there, it's close. What are you going to do? I'm kidding. You're good, Jacob. You're going to be reunited with your loved one very soon. We have a success story from Nigeria. I made a video about it. Nigeria, they, Lagos, Nigeria, just approved the K-1 visa, put it in this man's passport, and now he's he's a, he flew to the United States on the 5th of October. They put the visa in his passport on October 2nd. He got on a plane October 5th. Now, that's a rapid turnaround. I like his style. Uh, spend B1231 military card. All applicants need to provide original copy and certified English translation of military card. If you are exempt from the service, please provide a copy. So, are you, are you the beneficiary? Okay, so you got a military exempt. That's normal for every single embassy. Okay, if you if you were in Turkey and you were told you have to serve in the Turkish military and you didn't, the U.S. government wants to know why you didn't serve. What was the reason? Why didn't you do it? Well, you got an exemption. What was the reason? It will be on your military card. Now I understand. 
Now I understand. If you are in the United Kingdom, if you are British, and you served in the British military, you served in the RAF, the Royal Air Force, you served in the, in the Royal Marines or the Royal Navy, and you are a beneficiary, you have to get a letter from the military, from the Royal, from the Royal Marines, Royal Navy, whatever, and they want, and the U.S. Embassy in London is going to want to see what was your service. How, how did you leave? Did you leave with exemplary marks? Did you leave under, un, under honorable conditions? They want to know what happened. That's it. It's easy. So you got it. Spend B1231. And we, and we give you our best regards to, our, to everybody in Turkey. All right. We love you guys in Turkey. But if you didn't serve in the military in Turkey, get, a, get that exemption card, military exemption, whatever it is. And give it to the embassy. Uh, Jason Mabry, I already have given my fiance the I-134. Good. The original, right? The original. I think I put one when asked about how many beneficiaries for my daughter. Should I have her change that to zero? No, leave it alone. No. So you filled out the I-134 and... I put one when I ask about how many beneficiary for my daughter. Well, your daughter, is she your beneficiary or is she your beneficiary's beneficiary uh, uh, de dependent? I need to look into that a little deeper. Uh, Pete B, love the vacation, summer vacation movie reference, Clark Griswold. Yeah, the Griswolds. Vegas vacation, summer, you know, Christmas vacation. You know, the cat goes under the chair and chews the Christmas lights and gets evaporated. I mean, I mean, I felt sorry for the cat. I mean, I'm a cat lover, but that cat got fried. You know, and in, and in Clark, he, he puts the lights together and all the lights go out in Chicago, except for his house. Tashlin's World. Oh, wait a second. Tashlin's World. What should I, what should I put in the second intent to marry? Well... You put exactly what you put in the first intent to get married, but you're going to uh, exemplify, you're going to make expound upon it. You are still in love. You have made these trips to visit your beneficiary. What, what more stuff have you done since your first letter of intent to get married? When I submitted my first letter of intent to get married to immigration, I went back to Colombia and stayed with Karina for 10 months, lived with her for 11 months. Guess what? That goes in my second letter of intent to get married, plus all the receipts. I kept every single receipt when I went to Jumbo or Exeter or the, or the Dollar City and bought stuff. I kept the receipts. It shows my name on my credit card in Colombia. There is absolutely no question or doubt that I was in Colombia for 11 months. I can prove it. Credit card receipts. Uh, Tashlin's word, I signed up, but they need proof of us together in video chat. Okay. Uh, let me see. We're still getting married at the courthouse. You can do that. Just the two of us. That's fine. How do I prove that we're getting married at the courthouse? Well, number one is the document is going to say you got married at the courthouse. It's going to be signed by the clerk of the court. That's evidence number one. Evidence number two is you get a picture with you and your beneficiary and all the people that work in that courthouse say, hey, come on, let's have a pic picture together. And then you got a picture, even though those people weren't invited to your wedding, of a group of people that were at your wedding. That's evidence right there. Can everybody, hey, come here, come here, come here, come here. Get them in a picture. The clerk of the court, the person that gives the wedding to you. Who's, who, who, uh, who was the wedding benefit? You know, who, who gave the wedding to you? Who, did, who said the words? Get all these people in pictures. Uh, spend B1231. I'm on the verge of an interview and probably will get an interview in the next one to two weeks. Okay. In Ankara, right? But if I wanted to complete my military service, it would take six months. What do I do? Well, why didn't you complete your military service? Have you been, have you been, have you been uh, honorably, honorably discharged from the Turkish army or air force? What are you, what part of the military are you in? Is it mandatory you complete these six months? Will the Turkish government look for you and have a pro and, and hunt you down if you don't complete the six months? Is it mandatory? Or have you been discharged from the military? Uh, 
So if now your K-1 visa is good for six months from the date of the medical exam. So it's up to the U.S. government what they do. The U.S. government's going to want to know, have you left the military? Are you done? It's going to be up to the embassy officer in, in Ankara. If you haven't, if, you, if it's mandatory, you complete your military service, I don't know. That's between you and the Turkish government. The Turkish government needs to release you from the, from the military. So co contact the military and say, hey, I'm going, I got my K-1 visa, I'm moving to America. Have them discharge you. And show that information to the embassy officer. I've been discharged, I'm good. Jason, my daughter from a previous marriage. Yes, I traveled to Ghana and gave her all the originals. Okay, well, your daughter from a previous marriage is your, is your dependent, not your beneficiary. You're dependent. She's not a she's not a she's a, not your beneficiary. She's your dependent. So when you filled out the I-134, you put your name, your daughter's name, and, and the number of dependents one. When you fill out the paperwork on your beneficiary side, you fill out your beneficiary's name. Does she have any kids? If she doesn't, you put dependents zero. That's how it works, okay? Remember what I just said, okay? Your daughter from a previous marriage is your dependent. You put your name on the I-134, you write her name under your name, and you, and you put one in the block for dependents, one. And then you put your beneficiary's name on her side of the form, so the total family size is three. Immigration, all they're trying to do is figure out how big is your family size and how much money do you make. That's it. Uh, Faith, uh, wait a second here. Best music. Hello, Diego. I'm trying to get an appointment at Yaravan Embassy. You think how long it's going to take? Two to four months. That's the average right now because they're busy. Lots of people, lots of embassies are just wrapped around the axle trying to process K-1 visas. Colombia, same. Colombia is busy, busy, busy. So, uh, you know, it's going to take me a couple of months to get a visa interview scheduled in Bogota. But I tell you what, I'm going to be in Colombia when I get it figured out. Uh, Faith A, when we fill out the I-134 for the petitioner asset part, do we have to put, fill out or if the income is enough? When we fill out the I-134 for the petitioner asset part, if your income is sufficient, Faith A, if you make plenty of money, you don't have to put your assets in there. That's, it's irrelevant to immigration. All they care about is how much money you make. That's all they care about. And if you're not quite there, then you put then you put your assets. You know you can have a million dollars in the bank. Then you qualify, right? Or five hundred thousand dollars in the bank. Immigration just want to see that you're going to be able to take care of your beneficiary. If your income is sufficient, you don't have to worry about the assets. Jacob, Diego, when is the cutoff for young males for selective service? Eighteen to thirty-four. So if you have a K-2 coming over who's 18, 19, or 20, they have to register for selective service. If you are a male beneficiary coming to the United States of America on a K-1 visa as a beneficiary, you, if, you're age, if you are aged between 18 and 34, you have to register for selective service in the United States of America at the post office. If you do not register for selective service, there will be problems for when you apply for U.S. citizenship. If you if you do not register for, for selective service and you are a male, this, females do not apply to young ladies. Young ladies, don't, don't listen to this. Cover your ears. This is for guys. If you come to the United States and you are aged between 18 and 34, you must register for selective service. If you do not, when you apply for U.S. citizenship, you will be denied U.S. citizenship. You can still stay in America on a green card for 10, you know, keep renewing your green card every 10 years, but you can't become a citizen. Register guys for selective service. Uh, Jacob, or does everyone, no matter their age? No, Jacob, men, young men, only 18 to 34 must register selective service, including you, Jacob. Uh, when I when I was 18, when I turned 18 years old, uh, actually when I turned 18, I, I joined the Navy 
when I was like 18 and a half, 19. So I, I registered with Selective Service and then I joined the Navy and then stayed for 20 years. How about that? Uh, spend one, two, three, one. No, I haven't, and it, and it is mandatory. I have an exemption until the end of the year. Okay, if you have an exemption until the end of the year and you have a K 1 visa interview in two weeks, you're good, but you got to bring that exemption card to the to the to the K 1 visa interview. You got to bring that paperwork that says you have been exempted from military service until the end of the year. Get that piece of paper. Bring it to the to the visa interview in Ankara, Turkey, and say I'm exempt from military service till till the end of the year. Immigration will give you a your green your K one visa. Okay, you're good, because once you get to the United States, then you then your allegiance is to the United States. Then you got to register with Selective Service in the United States. You got it. Uh, Yilda Kulon Medina. Hi, Diego and Karina. What's going on, Yilda? Jason, sorry, I meant dependent. Yeah. Jason, your daughter is your dependent. You put your name down on the I-134. You put your daughter's name underneath your name, and you put dependent. One. It's one. And that's two people in your family. And then your beneficiary, you put zero dependents. So that's a family of three. That's it. That's all you're going to do. Yilda, have our interview on the 31st. Send us good vibes. Yilda, you've got this. And you're talking the 31st of October, right? Not the 31st of December. Very good. Jacob, do we register after the green card or before the adjustment of status? Okay. You register for, for selective service. When your beneficiary sets foot on U.S. soil, it, within that few days, within a week, and then you get that selective service document and you include it in the adjustment of status paperwork. That way, immigration will not have a heart attack, okay? They will put in their computer database in Chicago or, or in Phoenix, wherever, that you registered for, that your beneficiary is registered for selective service. And you're, and you're done. Uh, Jacob, well, I know that Diego, I was signed up at 18, but just checking because he is 30. He's got, he's 30. He has to do it. He's got to register selective service. No, no, there's no, he's got no way out of that. You know, unless he was 35. 34 is the cutoff. So make sure he registers and make sure you get that printed from the post office that he registered. Okay. Now, he may need a Social Security number, so you may want to go to the Social Security Administration and get a Social Security number first, then go register for Selective Service. Uh, whoops, uh, Jenny Yellow. Okay, I see you asking about second letter of intent. Spend B1231. Yes, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. You're good, Spend B1231. Bring that letter of exemption from Turkish military service to your visa interview, say, hey, I'm, I'm exempt till the end of the year. You're good. When you get to America, register for selective service, then your allegiance is to the United States, now, Uncle Sam. And then Turkey won't, there's nothing they can do. <clears throat> uh, whoop slap, good evening, Diego. Judith will be doing CFO. Well, yeah, got to do that. I am I am 1 a.m. our time, 1 o'clock in the morning. Then just 16 days till she is here. Very good. Okay, we'll get up at 1 o'clock in the morning and wait up with her. And then when she gets done with her class, congratulate her. Best music, double O. My fiance lives in Iran, beautiful Iran. And she is working at uh, Lingo Ace as an English teacher. Okay. Do you think they're going to, going to, approve our case because of her because of her occupation because they are sending most iran cases to ap iranian cases are going to turkey uh ap what's ap what is that i don't know what that is you gotta spell it out for me okay if you are from iran it's no problem to get a green a green card or a k-1 visa to come to the united states it's no problem 
but you're going to have to go to an embassy in Turkey or UAE or Dubai or somewhere else. Not in, our, in America, don't, we don't speak to the Iranian government. Uh, October, Yilda, okay. Good vibes for Yilda. Janiela, James, honestly, embassy didn't ask me for no letter of intent, but you, but you still brought it with me to the embassy. You got to bring it. Bring it. Bring those letters. If there's going to be a time when they ask for it, and then you're going to be looking stupid if you don't have it. Uh, let's see. KJB. Hi, Diego. I was told you can apply for a social security number two weeks after arrival. Yeah, you can do that. You got to have your I-94. You got to have a, in order to get a social security number, you got to get your I-94 printed. It takes about two weeks to get it. You got to get a copy of, a photocopy of your K-1 visa. Bring your passport to the Social Security Administration with your beneficiary and get it. Get your social security number and your marriage certificate. You got to get married too. You got to be married. Uh, Vivian, Shiamako Zama, hi Diego, how are you doing? And how is Karina? Karina's good. She's watching you guys from Bogota, Colombia, right now. She's watching us. So, hola, Karina, como estas? Te amo, mi amor. She's right. She's watching right now. So, let's see if we can get her to write something on the on the computer. Maybe she'll say hello to everybody. Uh, let's see. Mm, Tashlin's world. We will be coming back to to JA to keep a big wedding after three years. Oh, so family and friends can attend. Okay, I understand. Uh, and best music is talking about administration. Uh, Tashlin, we will be coming back to okay. I said that Y05 Diego, great news. My fiance went to submit her papers and photos for a passport. Well, the good news will be when she has her passport in her hand. What is good news? She needs her passport in her hand. That's the good news I want to hear. And you got to make sure when she goes to get her passport that they have electricity at the office where she picks up the passport. If there's no electricity and the internet's down, then they won't be able to make her produce her passport. So that's the big secret to, uh, to Venezuela. One, some days they have power, some days they don't. You gotta know which days. Uh, Y05, Y05, good news, okay, it's good news, but the good news will be when she gets her passport. Uh, whoop slap, I planned to Diego. I thought you was going to be in Colombia with your fiance. Well, I, I thought so too, but I got to wait for the embassy to tell me it's good to process her visa to schedule the interview. I'm just waiting on the embassy. I wrote, I emailed him twice. If I email him a third time, they might get irritated and put me to the back of the line. So I'm not saying a word, I'm just waiting for them now. Uh, I'm, I'm not messing with the uh, Bogota. I'm leaving them alone. They're busy. I'm just saying, okay, you got my email. You responded back in two days. Thank you. Most, most, much gracias. Now I'm waiting for them. Uh, whoop slap. If you want, you can make a success, success video for me and Judith. You got it. I'll do it. I'll make it for you tomorrow. <clears throat> Jason. Hey, Diego, you missed my success story from Ghana. Oh, send it to me again. Send it to me again. Okay, so I'm sorry about that. Yida Colon Medina. Hola, Karina. Como estas? Muy bien. Gracias, Yoda. Y tú, tu bien? Tu día bien? What a fantastic day it is today, right? Uh, Tashlin's talking to Janiela. KJB, can one apply for a driver's permit after getting the social security number? Yes. You can, Mr. Beneficiary. Y05, today, Monday morning. Well, it's Columbus Day here in the United States, so everything was closed. So, you know, happy Columbus Day, everybody. And to our friends in South America, happy Columbus Day. Our friends, you know, Columbus, Colombia was named after Columbus. Christopher Columbus, Colombia was named after Christopher Columbus. Columbus. And Bolivia was named after Simon Bolivar. Best music, administrative processing. So they're going, if they're doing administrative processing, 
They're doing a security check on you. Yilda, Kolon Medina. I am of your of the Republic of Dominica, Dominican Republic. Ah, and I you love the Dominican Republic. I'll translate for Yilda. She said she's she is from the, the Dominican Republic and she loves it, the Dominican Republic. And Yavendras Ponto as Estados Unidos. Yippee. And she said she's gonna be in America soon. Yilda, you're gonna be here muy pronto. Muy pronto to via to viaje aquí in avion. See? Or Baco. Avion, see? Johnson M. Hello, Diego, and everyone. What's up, Johnson? This is another information live stream. Well, we hope so. We want it to be informational. If that's such a word, I don't know. I just made it up. Uh, Gislaine Quintiga have pending K-1 application. Need to go to do, need to do traditional wedding while waiting to get approved. No, you won't. Don't do that. You, if you go to, a, if you get a traditional wedding while waiting for your K-1 visa, your K-1 visa will be denied. Do not do that, Gislaine. Hear my words. Escucha mi palabras, por favor. No. No wedding, no traditional wedding, no wedding photos, nothing. Don't post it on Facebook. Don't put it on Instagram. We're, here's our traditional wedding. Guess what? Immigration will see that. And you're done. You're toast. Your K-1 visa's gone. Don't do it. Don't do it. Listen to me. Okay? No traditional weddings, no cultural costumes, none of that. You get your K-1 visa. You get on a plane to America. Then you get married. Then you get your green card. Then you go back to your home country and have a traditional wedding with the family. Okay? You got that? Gis Lane, you hear me? I'm trying to save you a big headache. Uh, let me see. Y05, they told her by December she will have it. Yeah, that's what I said. It takes about six months to get a Venezuelan passport. Okay, the Venezuelan government, okay, do not want their citizens leaving Venezuela. So they jack up the price of the passport. They make the process next to impossible, make it difficult, make it a long way, and, and it's insane. Okay? So, but remember this, remember this, if your beneficiary has a passport in the past and it's expired, she can still use that to travel on, okay? But if she's never had a passport, she can still travel, but she'd have to get out of Venezuela. But that's hard to do. If you don't have a passport, that's hard to do. She'll get it. She'll get her passport. And it's December, so it will be Christmas, so so. You know, the immigration folks will be hopefully in a good mood because they'll be close to vacation. Uh, Abdul Wahab Kanu, hi Diego. I have my case number last week, Tuesday, but still not get my welcome letter from NBC. The same happened to me. Send an inquiry. Hey, ask them what's going on. When you send the inquiry to the NBC, that will automatically extend your uh, K-1 visa also, your NOA-2 letter. Uh, Johnson M. Come on, everyone. Support Diego for sharing his information with us by liking his YouTube video. A lot of people need to see the video, see his videos. Well, yeah, when you hit the like thing on here, it helps him. It helps you to find the videos and push them out to other people, which means more people can get help from this K-1 visa nightmare for free. I do it for free, guys. Uh, but you will never, ever hear me ask you to like or subscribe to this channel. I will never, t I never ask you to do that. When I'm watching a YouTube video and then all of a sudden it starts out, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. I'm like, wait a second, I haven't even watched the video yet. How do you know I like it? And you're telling me to subscribe to your channel. I don't even know if I like your channel. Seriously. I don't ask you to do it. Either you want, either you like the stuff or you don't. <clears throat> Uh, Jason, are the U.S. Embassy interview officers usually from the home country or from the U.S.? They're from the U.S. And they speak it, and they speak the language of the country they're in. Yoda Colon Medina, no, I was talking about Karina. I was trying to trying for Karina to say something. Karina, por favor, escribo aquí. Karina, por favor, escribo noticia aquí para 
para personas. Poco, poco. Let's see if she, she, she's a little shy, okay? She's shy, a little shy. Okay, let me see here. Okay, Yilda, I asked her, but, you know, Jason, success story from Ghana. My fiance's friend, case IU129F, the interview was 11 months. That's pretty quick. Hopefully, we will have the same. Well, it's not luck. It just means that immigration are working harder and that the person put together a very strong K-1 visa package. They didn't put together a weak, pitiful K-1 visa package that's about this thick, you know, maybe like this, with hardly any information in it. It's a barely qualifying K-1 visa package, barely qualifying. If you put together a strong K-1 visa package, well, like I did, it takes them half a day just to scan everything. But, you know, oh, well, I, I, even if it takes an extra couple of days for them to process the visa, that's, that's, it's more important to me that it gets approved and that they can see their relationship is real. Karina Martinez, my beautiful prometida. Hola, Yilda. Buenas noches. Saludos desde Bogota, Colombia. Karina is on the, on the channel right there. She says hi to Yilda right there. Everybody say hi to my beautiful wife to be, my, my fiance, Karina. She's right there. Look at that. Uh, Jason, okay, gone is good. Mr. Rody 14 hello, my fellow Diego. I am about a month from flying to Malaysia, okay, with my beneficiary. Have you made a video recently about what I need to bring to her? Yes, I have. I can just look, through. I've made over, what, 700 videos? I lost count of how many videos I've made for you guys. But there's a video in there about Malaysia and what and about what documents you need to bring to the visa embassy. Marvel Campbell said, Hola Karina. Yilda, colon Medina. Hola Karina. Buenos estas aquí. So good, good day here. Uh, full circle. Hola Mrs. Diego. Not yet. Almost. She'll be Mrs. Diego soon. She's she's uh, very close to being Mrs. Diego. Yilda, Diego, mucho ayuda, mucho, muchas gracias. De nada, Yilda, no problema. A mí, mí, a mí gusta yo ayuda para ti. Importante, relaja, calma. No, no rápido, rápido, no, calma. Bien, Yilda, and you will get your visa. Just got to relax, guys. Go through the process, go through the drill. And, uh, you know, before you submit your K-1 visa, if you haven't submitted it yet, if you have not submitted your K-1 visa, you, before you submit it, please tell me that you're going to mail it and we'll go over it to make sure there's no mess ups in there. Okay. I want to make sure you don't mess it up. Shiku Domboya. Hi, Diego. I have a question. Yo tengo una pregunta. My child is in Sierra Leone. I am in Germany. My interview will take place. Can file for my child K2, even though we're not in the same country. Can she fly from Sierra Leone? Let me ask you this question, Shiku. Is, is the child an American citizen or a K2? I don't want to I don't want to mess up the question. I want to make sure I answer the question correctly. You said your child is in Sierra Leone and you are in Germany. So it's this child from this, this is a child from a previous relationship. So she's a your child is in a K2 process, right? Was the child if the child is a K2, was the child put on the I-129F paperwork? Did did your sponsor okay, did your sponsor include the, your child on the I-129F? If your child was included on the I-129F, then your child needs to come from Sierra Leone to Germany. Okay, okay, so then you need to bring your child from Sierra Leone to Germany for the visa interview. You have Your child will have to be at the visa interview with you in Germany, in Frankfurt. Is it Frankfurt you're going to? Yilda uh, Colon Medina, amen. Recimos, recimos. Best music right now when I am trying to book an appointment, it shows no appointment available. That's normal. How can I find out which day will they will open the slots? Keep looking. Looking, look, 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 look. 
Is there any algorithm? No, there's no algorithm. There's no algorithm. You just got to find an open slot. When there's a when when the embassy gets unbusy, they open up days for visa interviews. Then you got to jump in there and get it. Okay, yes, she did Frankfurt. So Shiku, your your child is now in Germany with you, correct? I'm tr I'm trying to unconfuse this. Your child right now is K2 benefit a derivative in Germany with you. Yes or no? Okay, guys, I've been talking for an hour. Do you want me to keep talking and going over stuff, or do you want to uh, take a break and come back for the next live stream? Maybe I'll, you know what I'll do? I'll do a live stream tomorrow at 11.30 in the morning. How about that? Then the folks in England and Australia, New Zealand, all those other countries will be up and about when I do the live stream. Uh, what, Shiku. Okay, well, you need to get your child, Shiku, from Sierra Leone to Germany. Very important. Because your child needs to accompany you to the K-1 visa interview. Understand? And Yoda, I'll be back tomorrow. Yo regreso mañana, 11.30 a.m. Sorcha Anderson, people are asking me questions. Hi, Diego. My friend did our interview yesterday and got approved. Sorcha, very good. But I can't remember what country. Was that Sweden? What country was that? Guys, when you, when you have questions uh, or if you tell me something, tell me the country. Uh, Peter Korea. Hi, Diego. Thanks for your information about K-1. No problem. I filed for K-1 in December of 2022. When, I'm, when am I going to receive my NOA 2? Probably in November or December of 2023. It's, is it online or will they send notification to my mailbox? They will send you a letter to your mailbox. A mail, it comes in an envelope, USCIS envelope, you know, comes in the mail, not by email. Uh, okay, so it says her medical was late uh, when, when she checked the SEAC, it was refused. Well, refused isn't refused. What that means is it's in a holding pattern right now. They were waiting for something. They're waiting for, if you are in a 221G, like if you forgot something, if you forgot the divorce decree, if you forgot the I-134, uh, if, if immigration need extra paperwork, they say it's refused, but it's not refused. It's in, it's in a hold, on hold. So the medical was late. So the doctor in Jamaica was late in sending the medical exam in the sealed envelope to the embassy. So the embassy was waiting and waiting and waiting for the doctor to do his job or her job so they couldn't issue the visa. But as soon as they get the medical exam, right, the visa got approved. Boom. Shiku Dumboyo, can my fiance add my child in I-134 even though she's not flying with to USA, she may come later. I can't bring now, it's too late. You, you, can, you can bring your child to the USA later. That's no problem. On the DS-160, there is a spot. Oh, okay, 18 to 26 is the cutoff for selective service. I thought, no, it's 18 to 34. It's, uh, it's Now it's 18 to 26. When I joined the military, it was 18 to 34. So I will review that. Gotcha, Janiella. Thanks for double checking. 18 to 26. So Jacob, if, you're, if your fiance is 30 years old, then he doesn't have to register for selective service. If it's now 18 to 26, I'm glad you corrected that. Good job. Uh, Shiku, you, your child, why can't your child come to Germany? Why can't you go... Why, why not fly together to the United States? Why, why do that? She might come later. I can't bring her now. Why is it too late to bring her now? I mean, how long does it take to fly from Sierra Leone to Germany? What is it? 12 hour flight? What, how long is the air is the flight? Rule full circle. Does the divorce decree need anyone authentication apart from the presiding judge's signature? Yeah. You got to get the certified copy. 
We go to the judges, you go to the office, the government building, wherever they print the, 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 the divorce decrees. There's the secretary or the clerk of the court will stamp it, stamp it, sign it, and say, this is a certified copy. They usually stamp it in purple or blue with a blue stamp or a black stamp or a pur whatever stamp, and then they sign it. That's what you got to have, the original ink certification on that divorce decree, okay? So I had to do it. I, I got to do it. I'm in the same boat. And Jenny L says the uh, selective service cutoff is 18 to 26. Jacob, are you still with us or did you go to bed early? If it would appear that I gave you some bad information, it is not. So if your beneficiary is 30, he doesn't have to register. Uh, the military cutoff for 34 is how old you can be before you can join the military. 34 is the cutoff in the United States before, you, before you're too old to join the military. But 18 to 26, according to Janiella, is the selective service. But if you are a male, let me correct myself. If you are a male between 18 and 26 years of age, you have to register for selective service because if you don't, you will not get your U.S. citizenship. You will be forever in a continual rotating 10-year green card. Uh, Shiku, it's difficult. His paper to put together is not easy. How? What is difficult about flying your child from Sierra Leone to Germany? What's hard about that? Does your child not have a passport? Uh, you know, you don't. How do you want to be separated from your child? Or yes or no? It's not. It's probably no, right? Get your child to Germany. Get your child to Germany. Get in front of that K-1 visa interview and fly to the United States together. Don't do, don't do that, okay? Figure it out. Figure it out. Whoops, that Diego, do people have to pay travel tax when traveling with their visa? No. I never have. American citizens, I don't I've never paid a travel tax to to leave Colombia. Now Colombians may have to. Colombians may have to pay a, 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 an impuesta. To, to leave Colombia. I don't know. Karina's Venezuela. May not apply to her. I don't know. I've never had to pay a travel tax. Jewel. Hello, Diego, and all the K-1 filers here. What's up, Jewel? Full circle. K-1 visa packet contains all divorce decree pages, right? Yes, every page. Now, does my petitioner need to give me all the papers of the decree or just a certified page? Every page. Full circle, your petitioner needs to give you every single page of the divorce decree. If there's 50 pages in the divorce decree, you need 50 pages in your hand when you go to the visa interview. Uh, whoop slap. Judd is saying she needs to pay travel tax. I didn't hear about that. I never heard about it either. I mean, maybe you have to pay the government of some countries to leave their country. But, you know, it is what it is. I know I know. in Colombia, I think Colombians have to pay a, 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 an exit tax when they leave for vacation, if I remember, although that could have changed. Alex Mo, Diego, I received my welcome letter. Where you, okay, Alex, tell everybody what country are we talking about? Which country are we doing, are we dealing with here? Tell everybody. Everybody wants to know what country, guys. And I can't remember everybody. Okay, now YO5's beneficiaries in Venezuela and Jacob's beneficiaries in the Philippines, Pete B's beneficiaries in the Philippines. You know, I can remember most of you guys, Brian and Jacqueline's Colombia, Denise Jefferson's uh, beneficiaries in Nigeria. So I try to keep on top of it, you know, but I'm not as young as I used to be. But I do take my, uh, my uh, vitamins every day. Dominican Republic. Okay, Alex, Dominican Republic, and I'm waiting on my interview. Okay, you got it. You can do this. The K-1 visa process is not difficult as long as you don't rush when you fill out the paperwork. Don't be in a big hurry to submit it. Okay, that's when you make mistakes. You're in such an excitement. Your mind is racing 100 times a minute because you're going to bring your beneficiary, the love of your life, to the United States of America and you're going to get married, 
right? So you're in a big hurry when you fill out the paperwork. I got to get it done. Slow down. Slow down. Calm down. Relax. Do it page by page. And then check and double check everything 10 times. Put together a strong K-1 visa package. Then you mail it. Make sure you fill out the check correctly. Don't write any abbreviations. You, you write on the check, U.S. Department of Homeland Security. No abbreviations. You don't put U.S.D.E.P.T.H.S. If you do, your whole visa package will be sent back to you, canceled out. You got to start over again. When you fill out the check for $535, you write to u.s.department of Homeland Security. And you squeeze it in that check and don't mess up. The check, will, the, people put the wrong, put down the wrong price. They put, you know, they put down 600 bucks instead of 535. Well, they put down 635 instead of $535. You have to put $535, U.S. Department of Homeland Security. Sign the check, full name, sign the check, full name. Don't abbreviate it with initials. Don't scroll it like you're a doctor. Sign the check properly, and you're good. Uh, Bucky A. Hi, Diego. Please, who get the case number and invoice number? The sponsor does. Is it the sponsor? It's the petitioner. And does the three letters case number represent the state? No, the three-letter case number represents the country or the city of the beneficiary's country. So when I got my case number for Karina, my beautiful Pramatita, okay, it said BGT were the first three letters. BGT, which is an abbreviation for what? Come on, Bogota. Uh, let's see. You got it? And does the, the so you got you understand what the three letters mean on the case number? It's the country and the city in the country. You know, what let's say Rio de Janeiro for, for Brazil, or we what like RDJ perhaps, but Bogota's BGT. Sandesh Patil, hi Diego, for interview, original documents required, like divorce decree, original certified copies. I-134, original copies, original signed. The I-134 must be signed, and it must be the original 13 pages. You go into USCIS.gov backslash forms. You fill out the I-134. You print it. Whatever you couldn't fill out on the computer, you can fill out in a black ink pen, fill in any gaps that you couldn't fill in on the computer. You sign it, and you date it. That's the original 13 pages. You give that to your beneficiary. Okay. The divorce decree, you go to the courthouse or wherever, and you say, hey, I need a certified copy of my divorce decree. The, the clerk of the court will print the, the divorce decree for you. She'll get a stamp, stamp it, sign it, and date it. There's your certified copy of your original divorce decree. Those are what you need to put in the hands of your beneficiary. Not copies, not scan, not, not photocopy. That's not going to work. You know, you'd be lucky. Some some embassies will give you a break. Some embassies don't. So the best way not to, to, to risk it is to just follow the advice I give you guys. Bucky, okay, thank you. No worries. Jason Mabry had a lawyer when filed. My lawyer sent a copy of the divorce decree in the I-129F. Was that a mistake? It was a photocopy. You just got to wait and see what immigration says. They may... USCIS may accept it at the service center. They may accept it at the service center. But when you go to the embassy, when your beneficiary goes to the embassy at the interview for the interview, make sure your beneficiary has the certified copy with the black ink in her hand. Okay? You might be okay. You'll probably be fine at the service center. They'll look at it and go, okay, here's a copy. But he must know to bring the original certified copy to the embassy interview. Okay, you got it? You'll be okay. Uh, Alex Mo, I remember when I first sent my I-129 F packet and got California. It was 12 months wait. I would just look at the Nebraska center, it was like four months. 
Yeah, but Nebraska is taking longer than four months. They're not taking four months. They're taking longer than four months. Alex Moe, I remember, when, yeah, just the Nebraska Service Center. When I filed my first K-1 visa in 2016, it went to Nebraska. That's where it went. And I got the whole thing done in, 12, in uh, nine months, from NOA-1 to visa in the passport. Nine months. Boom. But that was in 2016. That was before COVID. And that was before the new rules were put in place. U.S. immigration put new rules in place where they now review K-1 visa packages twice. They used to review them only once. They used to review it and either approve it or deny it or send or request an RFE. Now they review it and they approve it. Then it goes to another immigration officer. Then they look at it and they repeat everything the first immigration officer did. Okay. And then if they both match up, then it gets approved. Then you get your NOA2 letter. That's the new process. And it's adding a couple of months to the processing. Or I would say now it's probably adding about six to eight weeks, six weeks to the, it's adding about six weeks to the time frame. Uh, full circle. Some questions are hard to ask a partner. They seem intrusive. Like, I like how the K-1 visa process makes couples more open and transparent to each other. Naked and not ashamed. Well, that's good, rule full circle. I agree. Just don't show up at the visa interview naked. Then there's going to be a problem with the gate security guard at the American embassy. The Marines might like it, but the immigration officer will get mad if you show up naked for your visa interview. Okay? I'm kidding, guys. All right, come on. Throw some questions at me, or I'm going to go and uh, get a uh, Mountain Dew. Pete B is keeping me supplied in Mountain Dew. Give me some questions. Uh, let me see. Full circle. Yeah. Yeah. It's good. The K-1 visa process helps you learn about each other from your partner because immigration makes you. They make you. Okay. Karina knows everything about me. She knows all about my first K-1 visa, the crash and burn. She knows about that person. And immigration, if they ask her about it, she'll tell them, yeah, he didn't work out. Okay. No big deal. But give me my K-1 visa, please. Thank you very much, because we want to get married, you know. We'll get married on the beach, and probably it's going to be January. The way, the way the embassy in Bogota is right now, they're running slow. They're going slow, so that's all right. They're, they're just processing visas. Brian and Jacqueline. Hello, Karina and Diego. What's going on, Brian and Jacqueline? Crown Queen. Now, I like that name, Crown Queen. I like that. If my fiance moves to another country but has his police certificate from six months ago from that country, does he need to get a new one? No. If he hasn't traveled back, he doesn't have to. No. He's good. Jewel, I watched someone who went for her interview this month. I watched someone who went for an interview this month. She was only asked for a divorce decree. No I-134, no other docs. She brought with her such as an updated letter of intent to get married. Every embassy is different, but here's the secret. Make sure you bring those documents with you to the embassy interview. You better bring them, because if you don't, you're going to be asked for them. Murphy's Law rules in a K-1 visa process. Murphy's Law runs the show. If you go with, the, if you go with everything that, you, that I told you to bring, Okay, if they ask you if they ask you for it or if they don't ask you for it, you got it. But if you don't bring the documents I've told you to bring, guess what? They're gonna ask you for it. They're gonna ask you, oh, I need your I-134. Oh, I don't have it. Then you go into administrative hall 221G, and it's not a pleasant experience. Uh crown queen. Uh, thank you. You're welcome. Brian and Jacqueline doing pretty good. Just got home from work. Okay. I hope you're getting well rested and relaxed after a busy day. Clay R15, how's it going, Diego? Any updates on your visa? I'm just waiting on the embassy in Bogota to send me a letter, an email, actually not a letter, an email, the packet forward saying, Diego, here's your instructions. This is what you're going to do. But I know what I'm going to do. I'm just waiting on permission. 
I'm waiting for Mother May I letter. And we're doing good, Brian and Jacqueline. We are Karina's watching right now. Say hi to Karina. See hi, uh, see hi, Diego, Chris from Cincinnati, Ohio. Patience has paid off from my fiance from the Philippines. You gotta be patient. Received NOA one on uh, August 4th, 2022, NOA two on August 22nd, 2023, case number September 26th, medical exam K1 interview December. There you go, got it done. Jewel, they have a list of what to bring during the interview at the embassy. That's correct. They have a list. You're absolutely correct. But if you bring all the things I tell you to bring in my video, just in case they deviate from their list and they may ask you, uh, I need your second letter of intent to get married, please. Oh, I don't have it. It's not on your list. You didn't tell me to do that. I need your second letter of intent to get married, please. It's not on your list. Bring it. So when that question comes to you and they say, hey, I need your second letter of intent to get married, you're going to go, here you go. Thank you. All right. I don't know if you ever watched the movie with Heartbreak Ridge with Clint Eastwood when, when the military troops, the Marines were trying to figure out what T-shirt that Clint Eastwood was going to wear for the for the morning form when, the, when they had the morning group meeting. Think about that. Brian and Jacqueline, super chat. Thank you, Brian and Jacqueline. Much appreciated. You are a fantastic sponsor of this channel. We appreciate you. You know, remember, guys, I could be out selling houses and closing business deals right now, but I'm not. I, I don't. I'm taking all this time to help you guys. And I want to do it. I do it because I want to. OK, but the super chats, they really they really we really appreciate them. When I get to Colombia, Brian and Jacqueline, I'm going to take Karina out to eat. At our, we got a, a real cool steak restaurant in central Bogota, and we're going to go there. And then Chopper Holly uh, has, has given some really good uh, super chats, too. And we're going to go eat steak there, and we'll dedicate it to you guys, okay? Uh, Alex Mo, this is a hard process. No, it's not. But it makes you and your partner so much stronger. Yes, it does. And dedicated to each other. There you go. It's not hard. It's only hard if you let immigration get under your skin. If you are not a patient person, if you want to file your K-1 visa tomorrow and have your fiancé in the United States in two weeks, you can forget about it. It ain't going to happen. Okay? Immigration want you to go to your beneficiary's country and spend time with her or him. The reason they make it such a long process is because they want you, Mr. Sponsor, to go to that beneficiary's country and make a commitment to your beneficiary, and it gives the and it gives the sponsor time to make sure that the that the visa process is real, that this person in this foreign country is not trying to scam for a green card. That's why it's such a long process. First of all, it's a security check. The immigration does you know the police checks that takes time. They want to make sure the relationship is real. They want to make sure you guys are real and, and that your beneficiary is real and that the sponsor is not. It, that's why it's such a long process. If you guys are in a real relationship, you love each other, if it, if, even if it took two years, you'd still get it done. You would get it done, right? Right? Karina, me, my beautiful Prometita. Hello, Brian and Jacqueline. Buenas noches. So Karina said, Hel good evening to Brian and Jacqueline. And uh, Brian said, and Jacqueline says hello to Karina. And Alex Moe. You got this. It, you're right, though. It makes you strong. It makes you strong. Faris Hassan, hi, Diego. Got my NOA 2 on September 25th, 2022. Went 2022? You mean 2023. When do you think I should hear from MVC? Probably by middle December. And what will they say? They will say, hello, Faris. How are you? Here's your case number. You know? That's, they're not going to be all lovey-dovey. I mean, they're not going to wish you Merry Christmas or anything, but they'll contact you. And Brian and Jacqueline, thank you for that super chat. Guys, thank you. Greg Lamping, hi, Diego and Karina. How long do you estimate from ready status to being able to schedule the embassy interview medical exam in Bogota? I think three months is about average, about three months. I've been waiting, I don't know, let me see, I've been waiting a what, two weeks, a week and a half since the ready status. I probably have to wait another two weeks for the packet four. 
So probably by middle, end of October, I'll get the packet four. Then I can schedule the interview probably in middle of December, somewhere in there is what I'm guessing. Brian and Jacqueline, we appreciate all the information you have given us. Well, it's a pleasure to give it out. It has helped us a lot. And thank you, Karina, for encouraging Diego to start the channel. Karina, it's just her idea. She, we were in Villa de Leva, walking around. It was like late at night. And she said, she said, Diego, you know, you've been you you've been with me for like this has been five months. We've been living together, six months. She said, you got to do something. I said, you're right. I'm not working. I got to do something. She said, why don't you put a YouTube channel together and help people with, with visas? I'm like, okay, yeah, that's a good idea. So I started it in Colombia. If you go back page down through all the videos, you'll see the videos that I first do it. The, the first videos I, I created were probably horrible. They probably suck because I didn't know how to make a video. But Karina was with me, okay? And now we've progressed to this stage where I can do live streams. And before I couldn't do live streams. I didn't know how to do a live stream, but I learned how to do it. Here we are together live in the world talking about visas. Uh, Greg, so for Bogota, it's about, I figure, three months from ready status. Uh, and yeah, Karina, she, she's a rock, man. She's, she, she's a rock in my life, I tell you that. Rules full circle. Why doesn't the USCIS embassy list out all the documents they could possibly ask for? How are we supposed to know what to include? Well, watch this channel. And I will save you from a problem, right? How are we supposed to know? Were it not for Diego and Karina's immense love for us, we are going to help you. Watch the channel. You won't fail. You'll get your visa as long as you qualify. you got to qualify. I mean, I say that. you got to qualify for it. Okay? Karina, buenas noches a todos. Siempre estoy en la transmisión. Muy atenta. Gracias a todos. So Karina just said to everybody, She's always with us, with the, watching the videos. She's very attentive to them, and she says thank you to everybody for watching the videos. So Karina is, is thanking you guys. Full circle. Gracias, Karina, for giving Diego the idea to put up the channel. Yeah, Karina, she, she's got a degree in tax accounting. She knows what she's doing. I'm a real estate agent, you know. What do I know? Greg Lampy, my fiance just tried to schedule a medical exam, but was told to wait until we have the embassy interview. That's correct. To avoid the possibility that the exam might expire. That's correct. The medical exam is good for six months. Okay. So let's suppose you get your medical exam done, and then you don't get your visa interview scheduled for six and a half months. Guess what? Your medical exam expired. Guess what? You got to pay for another medical exam. That's how it works. So schedule your visa interview first so you know what the day is on your visa interview. Then schedule your medical exam about two weeks before the, med the, med uh, the uh, visa interview. And you've got it covered. Alex, Diego, what is Packet 4? Pa packet 4 is an email from the U.S. Embassy telling you you can start the process to schedule your visa interview, and it's the directions. They give you the directions on what to do, okay? That's all it is. It's just a list of instructions, a list of things to bring to the visa interview. But if you bring to the visa interview everything I told you guys to bring over the last year, you won't have a problem with the visa interview. And there was a person in Brazil, okay, got his di directions list from the embassy in Rio de Janeiro. It didn't say you had to bring a divorce decree. So his beneficiary went to the visa interview without a divorce decree from his from her sponsor. She went into a 221G uh, administrative hall. Where's your divorce decree? Well, where's where you don't tell me I gotta bring it. Right? Bring it. She got her visa, but it took another like three weeks or whatever. Sort uh, wait a second. Jewel is talking to her full circle. Sorcha Anderson, best idea ever, Karina. This has been the best channel ever. Well, we appreciate the, the positivity. Brian and Jacqueline, hi, Greg. It took us about three months for Bogota. Okay, about three months. 
Our case was sent to the embassy on August 4th, and we have our interview on the 24th of October. So let's say August, September, October. So about three months. Okay. That's, so that falls in line with what I just said. And Greg says, thanks, Brian and Jacqueline. Thanks, Br Diego and Karina. Alex Mo. Okay, so I got packet four not welcome letter. I thought it was the same. No, Alex Mo. The packet four is, is the list of instructions on what you have to do to prepare for the visa interview. What you got to bring. The list. You know, it's, it's like a shopping list, okay? You know, when, when, when Karina gets to the United States, she'll give me a shopping list and tell me to go to Walmart. You know, and I just follow the list. And, and if there's anything in there that I can't find, okay, I'll, I'll call her and say, hey, I can't find this. Where is it? And then she'll explain what it is. Uh, Alex Mo, yeah, that's the packet four. Karina Martinez, gracias por sus sinceras palabras. And Karina said, thank you for all your sincere words. And she gave everybody a big hug. So Karina is giving everybody a big hug. Karina, muchos abrazos para personas in YouTube at order. So, so I'm jealous because I want all of her hugs too, but I'll get them soon. Okay, guys, I've been talking for an hour and a half. I'll come back tomorrow at 11.30 a.m. Central Time, which is 12.30 p.m. Miami Time, 10.30 a.m. Albuquerque Time, 8.30 a.m. Los Angeles time. So people in, Cali in uh, California, people in England, London, uh, people in uh, the United Kingdom, London, Scotland, Wales, don't want to forget, it's, the United Kingdom is composed of London, of England, Scotland, and Wales, okay? And Ireland, Northern Ireland. Don't want to forget those folks. Okay, thanks, everybody. Thanks for the super chats, and I'll see you tomorrow, 11.30 a.m., and we'll continue chatting, okay? And to Karina, mucho besos para ti, mi amor, te amo. And uh, Brian said, good night, Karina and Diego. Good night, everybody. See you tomorrow.